Hi Floss Tube. My name is Jen and I am the Backcountry Stitcher here and on Instagram. And thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. This is actually take two. I filmed a whole video and then my phone decided it was going to have a mental breakdown and deleted everything and won't record now. So that is why the lighting and everything looks a little different. And I am hoping I am looking into the camera. If I am not, I sincerely apologize because I'm filming this on my computer right now. So first of all, thank you so much for all the well wishes. If you don't know, I did have surgery about a week and a half ago. I'm doing great. Everything went well. There were no complications and I'm recovering great. I am going back to work on Tuesday, which I'm excited about. The last couple of weeks I have been, I've gotten a lot of stitching done, but uh, it's also, I'm definitely one of those people that needs to be working. I always think like, oh, I need a long break. And then I take a long break and I am like, uh, no, I need to go back to work. So, but I did get a lot of stitching done. So that's exciting. Um, I also am celebrating today. I am celebrating 500 subscribers, uh, which is mind blowing to me. I never expected to have that many subscribers. Uh, I really, I had started this channel just for fun and just for myself and it kind of blew up a little bit, which I was not anticipating. So I do have a giveaway at the end of this video. So stick around for that. And then I want to say, just shout out a few people uh, because I really enjoy their channels. Some of them have shouted me out and I want to pass that on. And so a couple of people I want to mention is Heather, the 20 minute stitcher. She has a great channel. As the name would suggest, she does her videos are mostly 20 minutes and she has this premise that if you only have 20 minutes a day you can still stitch so she does a lot of smaller projects but they're they're so cute and she's lovely to listen to I adore watching her so you should go check her channel out I also want to mention Lindsay at blushing pink stitches she's from England and just just lovely just a lovely human being and so nice and I love watching her videos she works on some beautiful projects she's working on the um, modern folk embroidery 2020 I think it's a 2020 style and it's coming out so great and she has some other kits that she's doing and I just I love watching her so definitely go check out her channel Carol uh, the Crafty Whippet, she is great too. I just have adored watching her videos and talking to her through the comments. She works on some beautiful mirabilias. Uh, she's the one, her focus piece that she's doing is Autumn Queen and it's to die for. So check her channel. She's also doing this tulips one that I really like and I it's so cute. It's like all these different tulips and then the word tulip backstitched in different fonts. And I, don't, I just, I love it. Love it. So check her out. And then the last person I want to mention for today, I, I definitely have more people to show, but I'll, I'll save those for other videos, but is Renee, the Appalachian stitcher. She is a hoot. She cracks me up. I love watching her videos. You know, she stitches a lot of smalls, um, you know, and, and sam samplers, but not the, I don't know how to describe it. Like they're, they look more historic. Um, she loves Christmas stuff too, but she is hilarious. And I just love watching her. And we met because we are both going to Stitch West, which is a stitching retreat that's held here in Salt Lake City, which is super exciting for me. I don't have to travel very far, um, but I can't wait to meet her there. And yeah, so those are the people I want to shout out today. I definitely have more people that I, I watch, um, but I'll try to get into the stitching more. Um, so I do have a finish for you and I am so excited about this finish. I cannot tell you. So the last time I saw you guys, I was working on the honeybee and it was 
the honeybee has gave me some troubles <laughs> uh, just figuring out how to stitch it just the like, literally the mechanics of it of how to stitch this so I finally figured it out it went great and I finished it I finished the honeybee so here it is there we go so this is a Mill Hill kit and this is Mill Hill buttons and beads and I just adore this piece so much. I, I don't know how to describe to you how happy this piece makes me. It just, every time I see it, I smile. I've told my husband a million times, I'm like, oh, I just love that piece so much. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I adore this. Now I did, um, so I, <laughs> When I did Orange Bird from Out on a Limb series, also by Mill Hill, I had some trouble with the frame because I had gotten the Mill Hill frame and I was like, oh, I'm not going to use a Mill Hill frame again. So what do I do? I use a Mill Hill frame again, which is, sounds about right. So the reason though is because the opening, these are basically made for these projects and so the opening was exactly the right opening of what I needed. And I, um, I, so I, that's why I went with this, but I had used one before, so I knew what I was dealing with. So I still had to put the, um, little brackets, I guess I don't, I forget what these are called, but they're like little brackets that I got from Amazon. So I still had to put those in and I used just yellow foam core. I used two pieces. So if you use these, I definitely recommend two pieces of foam core. Uh, just to give it the tension it needs to stay in place. But yeah, I'm so proud of this, you guys. So proud. I can't stop looking at it. And it's so sparkly with all of its beads. Look at that. Oh, and the lighting on my computer, like it just doesn't pick up how pink everything is. But oh, I just adore this so much. I'm so proud of myself. Now, will I do another buttons and beads kit? <laughs> Not immediately. <laughs> this is definitely tough to stitch. So I do have another one. I have the hummingbird. I will probably do that, but I don't know that I'm going to do that right away. Um, I probably need to let the struggle of the honeybee settle a little bit to know or to be able to work on the, the hummingbird. I will probably do it. It's just going to be a while, I think. So as far as whips go, I, like I said, I had the last couple of weeks off from work. So I had a lot of time. So I, I got a lot done, honestly. I, first of all, I finished the honeybee. So I'll show you, and I hope, I really hope, I'm just not used to this lighting, but the first one I'll show you is my Heaven and Earth Designs, and this is Disintegration, and it is, the artwork is by Stephanie Pugh Munla, and I got, I don't know where I was last time, I can't remember, but I'm at exactly 6% now, so there it is, and I don't have anything to hold up behind it because I'm unprepared. But it's great. You can see the antenna, or both antenna now are coming in. I've got more of this ring, which, do you guys ever feel like Heaven and Earth Designs is just sometimes messing with you a little bit with the amount of colors in such a small space? <laughs> because I certainly do. I certainly do. This ring is just... <laughs> There's so many colors and this antenna here too. I mean, I'm looking at the back right now and it's, it's a little embarrassing, but yeah, that's disintegration. And I love it. Love, love, love it. So this one, I thought, I thought this one was going to go away um, for, or I thought I was going to work on Warrior Kitty last weekend, but it was still May. I had my dates mixed up because Apparently, I don't know how to read a calendar, um, but uh, Warrior Kitty is going to come out in for the month of June, and this is going to get put away for the month of, or 
this is going to get put away for a month and then I'll kind of switch back. So Warrior Kitty, Warrior Kitty will come out. I haven't worked on it, so I'm not going to show that to you today, but that's where we're at with disintegration. Um, and because I'm filming this for a second time, everything is a mess over here. So the other one I worked on was Amaryllis. And uh, let me actually show you. So this is Amaryllis in bloom. And not used to this camera. Not helping. Uh, so this is Amaryllis in bloom. And this is a dimensions kit. It's out of print, unfortunately. So I, this is where I am at. I, I really just worked on the background. See, I'm not used to this camera and where it is. It's really hard to see what I've done, honestly. Let me see if I pull it back. Eh, it's hard to see what I've done, but I got a lot of the background stitching done. Um, let me see, yeah, you can kind of see it all in there. I just really have down here, uh, sorry, down here to do, and then I can do the back stitching. So yeah. And I think the back stitching is what's really gonna make this piece. And you know, I did also, the decision's final, guys. I am not doing, I'm not doing that silver cord. Not gonna do it. I, there's been a few suggestions on how I could do it, but I'm not, I just don't want to. So I'm not going to. And that's how it's going to be. So my other project that I worked on, and every, a lot of people seem to really like this one, is this is called, so I forgot to mention the name of it last time, but it's called Stitchy Stash, and it is an Emma Congdon design. So you can get this on her Stitch Rovia uh, website. And I don't, I'll insert a picture here of what it's going to look like. And then this is how far I got on it. So quite a bit done. Uh, I got a whole bunch more of the uh, tools. I got a lot of, I've been backstitching as I go because there is a lot of backstitching on this piece. And this is a present. This is going to be a gift for my mother. And she mentioned she might make this into a pillow, which I think would be so cute if she did that. But look at how ornate like those scissors are. It's just, it's beautiful. And I don't know what it is about Emma Condon's designs that are just so much fun to stitch on. I, I, they're, I mean, they're simple. They're not super complicated patterns and maybe that's it I don't know um maybe it's the colors but I enjoy stitching on this so much I I really enjoy her her designs so and that's just on 16 count uh just 16 count white Ada very simple and the last whip that I've shown you guys before is my arches project and you guys, I'm getting so close to finish. So close. I have 96. Oh, let me show you what it's going to look like. So that's what it's going to look like. And I am 96% complete. Look at that. Look at that. I'm so close. I just have that one column left to do. That's it. And then we're done. My husband's really excited. He loves this project. I love this project. So close. So close to a finish. I worked on this for two days um, and got like over 2,000 stitches in. It's really easy to get stitches in on this because there are such big blocks of color. But yeah, 96%, guys. I, I can see the lights can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I just love this because it's you know a national park piece it's uh, I should mention it's unique stitch crafts on Etsy is where you can get the pattern and you know we just love our national park so I'm really excited to have this finished and hanging I have um, a collection of 
patches. So I get a patch at all of the national parks that we go to. And I have them in these shadow boxes. Maybe I'll show them to you guys someday if you're if you're interested. And I think that this will be a really nice complement piece to hang next to those patches. So very excited about that. And then the last thing I have to show you is actually a new start. Um, so I started the raccoon. So this is Cottage Garden Samplings, a Year in the Woods series. This is number four, number four. And I got this pattern a little while ago, but I decided to start this uh, start this yesterday. And it's it's been great. So I am stitching this on. Um, what am I stitching this on? Thirty two count Lugana. Ugh excuse me, 32 count Lugana, and it's called In the Color Meadows by Bestitch Me, and it's part of the Woodland um, Woodland series. I, I can't remember if that's the exact name of it, but it's four colors that I believe were made for these patterns. Um, and so Meadows is the one I'm stitching this on, and it's, like I said, 32 count Lugana, which, and here's how far I've gotten on it. So yeah, so I started in the lower right corner, lower right corner, I got the house done and I got one of the flowers done and some of the leaves and I'm just going to kind of follow the pattern up with the leaves. The, the raccoon is on the other side of the pattern, so I probably won't get to that for, for a hot minute, but yeah, I'm really, I'm loving this. And I really like stitching on Lugana. This is actually the first time... I've stitched on Lugana and it the only thing is it is heavier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the fox I did on linen and it was a very light fabric and I really enjoyed that as well. Um, but the Lugana is definitely heavier. So yeah, it's just it's just a different experience, but I actually I really like it. I think it holds you know, it's easier to get good tension on it for the stitching. So I definitely see myself stitching more more Lugana. Really like it. And I have this ridiculously large piece of fabric that <laughs> I'm not going to use all of it for this project, obviously. Um, so we'll see what else I can, can stitch on it. So I don't have, I don't have a ton of haul. I have, I really just yeah, I don't have a ton of haul for you guys today. I had to order some fabric, or not fabric, sorry, uh, some floss from 123 Stitch, and the floss just couldn't travel by itself. It couldn't, it would get lonely. So I did buy this pattern. It's called Flea Market Flowers, and it is by Lori Holt. And I had actually been eyeing this for a while. So my LNS, which is Craft Center of Fine Stitchery here in Salt Lake, they have a model stitch of this that they did on, um, was it, uh, opalescent white Ada. And I, I just, I'm not usually, it's kind of weird for me because I'm not usually into flowers and things like that, but this particular pattern for whatever reason is, um, it, it just, it really called to me. I think it's the colors and the, uh, the, design of it, the style. I'm not really sure. I really liked it. So that was my random purchase. I did also get my fabric of the month from Fiberlicious. I was lucky enough to get into that. I get 32 count linen and uh, this month, if you haven't gotten yours yet and you want to be surprised, you can look away. But this one is called April Showers Bring May Flowers. And there it is. And it's it's a lot more purple in person than it is on the camera here. Again, I, my lighting is just off today. I'm hoping my phone figures things out in the next couple of weeks. But um, yeah, so it's a lot more purple than it's showing up. But I love this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It does have some shades of blue in it. And I don't know. What do you guys think about this on this? over here. I don't know. I was kind of thinking it. 
I'm not sure though. I'm not sure if the colors are going to be right. And I'm not creative enough to change colors in the pattern. So that's not, that's not going to happen. So maybe, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So, okay. So that's, that's the main part of the video. Now I want to, obviously we have a giveaway to celebrate 500 subscribers. I, again, I just can't, I can't believe that, that I have, that there's over 500 people that have subscribed to my channel and that there's all these views. I never expected this. So when I was deciding on what to do as a giveaway, I was like, what, what would be a good thing that kind of speaks to, you know, that kind of represents me. And so I decided on this book, Cross Stitch for the Earth by Emma Congdon. And there's 20 patterns in it and they are absolutely gorgeous. Here's one live in the sunshine, swim the sea, drink wild air. And these are all earth related. There's some, um, like these ones are about recycling. And those are super cute. But she has a lot of, um, a lot of outdoorsy stuff. Where's the one? I should have marked this before I, or like at least planned what I was going to show. Oh, here we go. Between two pines. This one's really cool. It uses a lot of negative space to make the pine trees. So I really like that. And then I, the first one that's in here is just awesome. And I think Frizzy Lizzy Stitches is stitching on this. It's unplug, unplug and go outside. So yeah, so this book could be yours. I have my own copy, but I wanted to get you guys one. So, how are we going to do this? So what we'll do is if you want to win this book, um, please use the word earth in your comment. So leave me a comment, use the word earth. You don't have to use it in a sentence. You can just write the word earth. It could be the only thing that you write. I don't really care. Um, so use the word earth. Now a couple of rules, you do have to be 18 because uh, I am going to need your mailing address. So you have to be 18. I will ship this anywhere in the world because I think most of my viewers are from the U.S., but I love all of my viewers. And so if you are out of the U.S., I will ship this to you, too. So um, and then don't use words like win or giveaway or free, because I want to keep this to just the people who are here for the cross stitching. So, yeah, leave the word earth and then I will do the drawing on my next video to see who the winner is. So that is all I have for you guys today. It's a relatively short video. Um, I'm hoping next time my camera situation is better. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Definitely go check out those floss tubers that I mentioned earlier. They're so great. And thank you again for over 500 subscribers. I I enjoy reading and leave, please leave comments. I love reading all the comments. I love meeting people. It's so much fun. So anyway, until next time, I hope you guys uh, stay happy, stay healthy and have a great stitchy, stitchy couple of weeks. Bye.